We live at a time where global population is, is rising significantly. So we have to find ways to sustain the planet, to produce the energy that we need uh, to, to power our civilization, to produce food, to produce clean water and so on, to, to, to ensure that everybody has a chance to make a difference uh, through their lives. What I'd like to have people think about is the importance of using energy in a very efficient, environmentally sensitive manner. The energy piece and how we do it in an environmentally responsible way is extremely important. It's something that does not only concern me, I think it concerns, it should concern every human being on this planet. There's a lot more that we'd like them to think about when they're using energy so that the new technology that we can develop can really make us live in a better world in the future. The vision was uh, to do energy research uh, as we saw the energy industry changing dramatically from being a highly regulated industry, which I spent my entire career in, to a much more deregulated, a much more customer focused industry. Uh, new technology we felt was going to be the driving force to the modernization of the energy delivery system. And then also having the fact that Stony Brook is a major research university in the state of New York and we also co-manage the uh, Brookhaven National Labs. They have a number of important research programs that specifically address energy needs for the country. And we take advantage of a lot of the unique facilities that they have. Many of our faculty, many of our postdocs and students are performing research there. And we can watch inside by various x-ray techniques to see what's happening real time that's just spectacular. That was not possible just a few years ago. And that essentially gave us tremendous assets that we could utilize in building the research enterprise. And Dr. Shumash, whose expert is in technology, uh, and I connected on that level, and we saw a real opportunity to do some very exciting things right here at Stony Brook, right in the Energy Center, to really move the energy industry ahead with the new technologies that were gonna be developed. Our fundamental mission is, is frankly to do good, whether it is education or doing great research, which is more where my role is as opposed to education. Um, that charge to me is to do good. We've got a lot of energy sources out there. Wind, solar, these are intermittent. We all know that. You have to w have a way to get that back into the grid. You can't do it all the time you have to be able to store some of that energy. We have here at the, at the Energy Center in conjunction with Stony Brook, one of the premier researchers in battery storage, Dr. Esther Takeuchi. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is get batteries uh, to deliver closer to the energy that's in the can. So we know what's in the can, we can calculate it, but in terms of using it, it's not possible. So we're trying to bridge that gap. The other thing we're trying to do is we're making batteries more environmentally friendly. So we're using materials that are earth abundant and non-toxic. So if we can generate electricity from wind farms or solar cells, store it in batteries, use it in electric vehicles, then all we're moving around is electrons. We don't have to burn anything. So instead of a fossil fuel economy, we end up with an electron economy. We also have a gas technology institute here, just started uh, at the Energy Center. And that's looking at the use of natural gas in a more efficient, economical manner. We're also looking at renewable gas. Sources such as landfill um, and, and wastewater treatment plants, um, agriculture, agriculture waste, and these things are all local. That can be intermixed with the gas system and again, move us much more towards a renewable energy supply. This is a low-hanging fruit for us because if we start making more efficient processes and start, instead of 40%, we can go to 60, 70, 80%, we have so solved 40% of the problem in terms of climate change, the CO2, avoided CO2 in the atmosphere. So the energy center over here is an integral part of Stone Brook University, and um, it, uh, it houses a number of different labs focused on energy research. This is one of them, the Advanced Combustion Laboratory. 
Uh, it's very diverse. The center is very diverse. It offers high-tech facilities. In fact, this is the only facility on campus that you can have combustion indoors, which is essential for our experimental engineering research. We do the very early stage research. So everything that's in a low technology readiness level, whatever is in a low TRL is being handled by universities and national labs because we tend to focus more on the fundamental science. We spend time trying to understand the science and using that to design all the combustion process that we need, that we need in an engine. Once the science is established and we have that knowledge, then the automotive OEMs will step in. They use that science and they'll put their development teams in, in the work so they can actually design these engines for production. The other thing that excites me is the establishment of an offshore wind center right here at the Energy Center. We will have some of the first offshore wind facilities here on Long Island and the learning that we can do there to then push the field forward as a scientific institution rooted in looking at the future and application of that science to next generation wind and smart grid and energy storage. Um, that is where Stony Brook and its partners can play a huge role. So we will have located right here at the Energy Center the National Offshore Wind Research and Development Consortium. And if we were not here and we didn't have this Energy Center at Stony Brook, I think it's unlikely that we would have, New York State would have been able to win that bid. Ultimately, what they want to do is not just build a better turbine, they want to implement wind as a source of energy, and energy storage is imperative to make that happen. Just imagine that you are producing offshore wind from the offshore wind farm power, and then you have to bring it to people. Instead, if you want to store that right away, how about we just take water from the bottom that's flowing right near the wind farm, and convert that into hydrogen but through electrolysis, known technology, and store that hydrogen fuel and use as you need it. So we host this energy conference in New York City, and one of the exciting things about it is we bring in scientists and research and experts from all over the world in all different fields, and we bring them to one place where they can collaborate, where they can exchange ideas, and they can talk about their technologies and how they could interact with other technologies. So while we're located here on Long Island in New York State, our outreach is much greater than that. If you look at the economic impact of the whole university in the community, it's in excess of $7 billion. It's really an impressive enterprise that we built up here. The Energy Center is important in that mix because this is one of the focuses of that connection with the community. We have a number of incubator companies located right here in the Energy Center. Those are early stage companies, primarily in the energy field, that are starting businesses using new technologies that are being developed here. We bring companies together and we provide this unique intersection of faculty research, student engagement with companies and industry. They rub shoulders. They're next door to each other and this is how you exchange ideas. The staff at Stony Brook uh, in the engineering department in particular, and Professor John Longton, who's helped us in a great number of ways, has brought a variety of students to Thermolift who become full-time employees in combustion system development, in mechanical, uh, mechanical aspect, and mechanical development over, over our device, in electronics development. So we've, uh, we have about uh, seven to eight full-time students who've graduated from Stony Brook who've joined the company at PhD and master's level who've aided in the development of, uh, of our technology. Well, there's a multitude of reasons how the Energy Center helps and the connections and the people that walk through the doors here that are otherwise not accessible to startup companies. Meeting executives at Con Edison and National Grid uh, and having the president of National Grid come visit us at the Energy Center because of the credibility brought about by the research work we're doing here with the university. We have incredible track record in terms of our incubator companies. I believe it's something like 55% of our the companies that start up and our incubators are still in business five years later. So that's a very, very good track record, about five times what you have nationally. It's very difficult as an entrepreneur starting a company and putting that network together. It takes a village and, and the Energy Center is that nurturing entity that allows a startup technology the opportunities for success.
Well, I think it's probably exceeded my original expectations. I could have never envisioned that we'd have, we would have brought in close to $150 million of federally funded research through the collaboration of the professors, faculty, and Brookhaven National Labs. So I think that's probably exceeded my expectations. I have huge optimism for the future because uh, we have the opportunity to change totally how energy is generated and delivered. And if we can change how energy is generated and delivered, we will change how the world functions. My vision is for the Energy Center to be the leading research organization in the state of New York, indeed in the Northeast, that is focused on solving problems that better society. I would say there's better than hope. There is hard science rooted in fact that will solve problems. I don't think it's a question of if, so better than hope. There is certainty that we will solve problems. Now, 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 now.